let's see here. Go to this one. Hey everybody, Lee from PC Junkie Mods here. So today in front of me, I got a bunch of Corsair stuff. I got a, um, pretty much all their stuff for the Hydro X series. Uh, Hans Peter came to see me a while back. He brought some stuff out to us. Uh, there's a limited edition uh, Pelican case here that's got a bunch of products in it. And okay, so I guess I got some audio. Hold on. So, uh, so yeah, so I wanted to check out some of the stuff because I haven't really checked out anything except for maybe the CPU block. Uh, when I did the Where's Waldo build, he actually used the same CPU block for his build. Um, so I have an AMD and a um, NVIDIA GPU block. So we'll, we'll check out those. We'll check out the radiators uh, and stuff like that and look at some of the fittings and and so forth so let's let's just kind of dive right into it uh because i haven't had a chance to really get any hands on with any of this except for like i said the cpu block so i kind of wanted to check everything out and go over a few things maybe explain a couple things to some people that they might not know like uh for one the block usually is gonna have if i'm not mistaken it's just got the pigtail that needs the controller for it so you still need a light node pro to plug into um, or Commander Pro. So I'll kind of talk about some of that stuff and, and show you how all that works. So I'm going to switch the camera view. I'll do the camera down. So you can see what we got going on here. So here's the, the box that Hans brought out to me. And of course he brought all this other stuff. This box right here is my box. Um, I just happened to come across this recently and I thought it would be kind of cool to look at this. This is the old Corsair Link uh, controller. So it's not a Commander Pro, but uh, I just wanted to show you how far Corsair has went from this controller to the Commander Pro uh, controller. So when I get to the Commander Pro, I'll kind of, I'll, 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 we'll, we'll talk about this more. <clears throat> so here's the Pelican case. Unfortunately, it's upside down. So uh, to be able to open it, so I'm gonna, I've already looked in it, obviously, but what he brought was uh, everything you see on the table here. He brought all that stuff out and the, the two different blocks. So one's for 2066, which is the XC9. Um, I should probably remove the plastic so the plastic's not uh, reflecting. Cause look at all the reflections. Let me uh, get my knife here and open some of these guys. So this is the XC9 block for 2066 and AMD STR4 compatible. And then you have uh, the XC7, which is 1150 series uh, uh, for Intel and AM4 compatible, which probably backward compatible AM3 if you were going to do that. But So here's the XC9 and in the package you get... Your block, I think it's pretty plain and simple because uh, I remember opening this one. There wasn't like a lot of stuff in here, which is kind of nice. So uh, it's a big box for, for just this uh, CPU block. But So you got your uh, instruction manual, how to install it and stuff like that. And then, of course, your warranty guide. And then inside you got here, actually, you no, know, makes sense why it's so big. So you got your block. And then you got your AM4 uh, retention bracket as well. So and it's all dark nickel, which is pretty nice. And this one, so I guess you can get this in different colors because I had a block that was black up top. Um, so I'm assuming it comes in different colors. Don't quote me on that. And maybe, maybe just the XC9 comes in silver. I don't know. It doesn't actually say on the box that it's a certain color or whatever. So I'll have to kind of look at that and what does it say? Nah, but it would tell me in the SKU number if I knew the SKU numbers. This one feels kind of hefty, which is nice because when I, uh, to be honest, um, this is 
when I was doing where, Where's Waldo's build, I had no idea any performance or anything about uh, the block at the time. But I, I felt like it was a rebranded Asutech block, but come to find out it's not. And um, they just made the thin, the, the cold plate very thin, which made it really light. So uh, my thinking it was Asutech was because it was so light that I, I was like, well, this has got to be an Asutech block, but it, it's not. So, um, but the, the way that they're, the bolt down pattern and the brackets made me also think that, you know, being that it, it, it has the same look and so forth. So each block that you get is going to have a pigtail on it. And obviously you're not going to be plugging that into the motherboard. Um, that's not going to work unless you, I, I want to say MSI maybe has a header for, um, for one plug. I want to say one of the MSI boards, I, I could be mistaken. I think it was an MSI board that I came across that had a plug in for this. But you, you need the Commander Pro or the Light, Light Node Pro. The reason being is uh, the IQ setup actually has, well, I gotta find the, the uh, there it is, Commander Pro here. Um, the IQ software is able to control, these are, uh, I'm pretty sure, NeoPixels inside. So they're digital in and, uh, and was it five volt digital in digital out? I think is what it is. I'm just gonna cut both those. So let me just kind of show you this stuff real quick. So this will explain your uh, RGB block and your reservoir as well. So obviously, the more stuff you add, the more controller. Uh, options you're gonna need because like on the Commander Pro um, if I'm not mistaken you only have one two two plugs here um, so in order to plug in multiple devices so let's say you got some MLs or LLs or HDs or SPs or whatever it may be um, these come with the controller. So they're gonna come with the RGB controller. You can control six fans, right? Um, but they're gonna have one pigtail that comes off that needs to go back to like your Commander Pro. Um, but they come with the Light Node Pro. So the Light Node Pro actually has two RGB channels. So you could technically take this guy, the Light Node Pro, and piggy pigtail it off the Commander Pro. So you run one of the lines out to the Commander Pro and that gives you three channels now because you have you have your RGB controller. Well, I'm sorry, not three channels. Here now, I gotta open it. Actually, here, hold on. I have no. I'll just open this. I have uh, a a whole tote full of Corsair Commander Pro and IQ stuff. I just before I, I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. I mean, I've done a lot of these, but at the same time, it's it's always a, I got to remember every time I do this, how it was set up, you know, and go back and double check. I've had to message George a few times, how many of these can I daisy chain, blah, blah, blah. And pretty much he said, uh, as many as you want, as long as you have enough power for it and space for it. So um, here's the Light Note Pro. So what you're going to have is, So you're gonna run, you can either run the Light Node Pro off of this um, directly into the USB, right? So you're gonna, do, you're gonna jump off the USB header because uh, this is a, a fan controller, LED controller, temp sensor, and a USB um, splitter, uh, I guess you could call it, or controller. <coughs> it just gives you more USBs, right? So. You're going to plug this guy into your USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. And then you, by doing so, you end up getting two more here. So you take this guy, run the USB to this. That gives you two more, two more channels here. So if you ran two of these into here, then you would have a total of six LED channels. So you got one, two, and let's say your CPU, there's three. And if you have six fans, that's a fourth already. So you already need four channels, right? 
Um, the thing is, is you don't necessarily have to daisy chain this to this. You could actually just plug it in uh, directly to the motherboard, but that would be kind of stupid. Um, and you don't need this to run this. In other words, these would have to come with the fans every time you bought a pack of fans. Um, this is just a more advanced controller. So what people will probably, uh, uh, I've under, uh, been hearing that there's a little bit of confusion. The confusion is, is if you buy it, the GPU block or the CPU block or the reservoir, I haven't opened the reservoir yet, so, but I'm assuming it's the same way as the CPU and I'm assuming the GPU is the same way as well. Now, they don't come with a Light Node Pro. So this doesn't come with a Light Node Pro. You saw me pull this out of the package. It was just the CPU block and the bracket here. Um, you need one of these two guys in order to control this. Unless, like I said, um, you had a board that actually had the plug for it, you know, which is far or few and in between because I can't even remember what board it was. Anyway, so just wanted to clarify that you need Commander Pro or Light Node Pro to be able to control your RGB on your block. And we're going to open up the GPU, the AMD, well, I'll open up the AMD GPU block so I can show you um, just to clarify and make sure that what I'm talking about is true and correct. So that's that one. And this block is going to be pretty much the same. I'm going to open it and see if it's uh, the same color. Then I'll know what's... And I, I mean, I guess I could go online and look and see if they have different colors. I'm assuming they do. Why would you just have one color? Not everybody wants to do black. Not everybody wants to do silver, right? Or maybe they're just, this one's black. So maybe, yeah. So maybe it's just by the, the part number because that's the nine, this is the seven. I'm not sure, I'll look into it. Um, but yeah, so here's the, for your 1150 and AM4. And you can see the bracket, the difference of the bracket there. It has the back plate and your stand knobs and stuff. So a few more things in this one. Same thing, instruction manual. Warranty card. Let's see if I can put it all back together here. Because I got a lot of things to look at here. I just wanted to go over a few things, give you guys my thoughts. Um, Not that it matters, but you know, whatever. I wanted to look at this stuff, so I thought I'd, you know, do a stream and show you guys at the same time. All right, so where did the manual, there you are. I'll put this guy back in here. And as for fittings, I have a bunch of different fittings here. I'm not quite sure if it's the whole lineup. I think it is. Um, there might be some more since since they launched um, that they've come out with. <clears throat> All right, so there's the CPU blocks and obviously the fans. You guys have seen fans before. The MLs are kick-ass fans. So are the LLs, uh, the HDs. They're, they're all the Corsair, those RGB fans and stuff. They're top of the line stuff. Um, the MLs are probably, them and the LLs are my top choice right now as far as uh, the Corsair lineup for fans. All right, so I showed you guys this guy. Um, this is a good buy, by the way. It's just, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass because of all the wiring. Um, but, you know, if you're good with wire management, it's manageable. Um, you could do like I've done multiple times where I have like two or three of these and this guy, I put in a, uh, a, um, a distribution block for power uh, to break it up a little bit. That way I don't have all these different SATA plugs and, and stuff like that. Um, it seems to work out. It's just kind of, it's a pain to figure out what's what here if you don't know a SATA. Um, all right. So, and then of course you have your little RGB controller with the fans. Um, and these are specific to certain fans, you know, like you can't take the SP controller and put that on an ML fan or an LL fan. Doesn't work. All right. Put that 
back in there, close this guy, move him to the side. <coughs> so I've been messing around with some lights in here. Um, I got uh, another light behind me now. So I don't know if you can see the shadow that's coming from behind me. It is up high. Um, it seems to be working a lot better. It's giving me more white light, which, which is what I'm after. My next step, I ordered some uh, diffusers to go up top to kind of um, kill some of this. You see how this, this yellow is so bright? Uh, it's not, it shouldn't be that bright. So I, I'm hoping the diffusers will tone that down a little bit and uh, get it to the true color that it should be. All right, so, and then also in here, I got the 2080 Ti and 2080 blocks. Um, I'm sure there's not a big difference in, in, in the blocks themselves except for some of the thermal pads and cutouts on the back of the block. Um, then we got the reservoir. Let's see if I can get that out of here. Got the reservoir. I'll put, let me put this stuff. I don't need to open four blocks, so I'll just put these guys back in here and then I'll get lost in my shop. I'll throw these back down in here and I already broke the, uh, oh wait, in here. Already broke the picking pool of foam, man. That sucks. Good job, Lee. All right, now I'll move this off the table. It's cool. Pelican case, for sure. That was a total surprise when Hans showed up with that. As you can see, this is my first time looking at some of this stuff. Um, like I said, the only thing I really looked at was the um, CPU block. And uh, so now we're looking at all this stuff together. This one, uh, the plastic was damaged, so I just peeled it off. And I should have just peeled every, all of them off because of the glare you get from the, uh, from the light. So typical stuff, uh, instruction manual warranty guide, and some brackets. Now, so I'm assuming this is a 120 millimeter bracket here. That's what it looks like, uh, the spacing. This looks like a 140. I'll look at the instruction manual in a minute, confirm that. Inside here, you got a bunch of different screws and standoffs and some, uh, some port or some uh, some caps to close your reservoir and stuff. More screws. Uh, it even comes with a, uh, a temp sensor. Wow, okay. Oh, well see, I'm not a big temp sensor fan, but this one I would use. I'd plug that directly into my Commander Pro. Huh. You know, cause I, I, it's just so many wires already. But this is a different story. I wouldn't mind knowing the, the temperature of my liquid for sure. All right, now look at that sleeve cable and everything. Okay. And then another bracket. All right, let's have a look here. So this looks like a normal stand type bracket and they include a 24 pin jumper, which is a nice uh, bonus. Especially if you don't have one. I mean, I got probably a couple hundred of them, but all right. So you got, wow, this is a pretty nice res here. Um, just trying to figure out this inside here. It's pretty trippy. So it's got like this thing down inside here. I, I assume that's a stop of vortex. So it comes with uh, sleeve cables, which is nice in black. So that way you don't see the, the blue and the green or the red and the black. Uh, black is fine, obviously. In other words, these would be sleeved as well. Um, but when you have all these different colors, it makes it a little, a little something. Uh, yeah, so, so these are, I was, I was correct. These are for mounting to a radiator or to a fan. Um, basically what you would do is you would mount this to the stand and then the stand 
would mount <clears throat> onto this bracket. Now the bracket needs to be like this up and down um, in order for this to line up if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So because if I do it like that, oh no, you could actually do it either way. Oh, that was clever. Good job there, Corsair. So, yeah, so you can, you can mount this either way. So I could put this on the fan. Let's just take the box. We should pull the fan out, I guess. So we'll just say the box is the fan. Um, this is the top. This is the bottom. So we could put this on here like that. And then you would have your up and down, uh, depending on where you wanted to put the reservoir. Uh, but if that's not enough for you, and let's say the height is right, then you could do left and right, or a little bit up and down. You get more up and down play, obviously, this way, but you get left and right play. So maybe you want your reservoir all the way up against your window, or maybe you want it all the way back in the corner, you know? Um, that's pretty cool um, to think that out like that. Yeah, these line up just like that. So I'm assuming that's why they did it that way. Um, I'll look at the manual here a little bit more. But this can also be mounted to anything else too. Um, you could drill four holes out in, uh, let's say, your chassis somewhere to mount this to, uh, the motherboard tray or whatever. Um, some of the, I bet you a lot of the Corsair cases are gonna start to come out with a four pattern like that just in case you wanna mount it to your case. All right, so let me see here. See, in, in these pictures here, yeah, yeah, so you can, uh, if, I don't know how well you guys, you guys probably can't see the manual. Um, no, stupid lights. Yeah, you can see there's, uh, this one here is, is left or right, and this one is up and down, uh, right? Oh no, sorry, those two are left and right, uh, but depending on if you put it at the top or the bottom, the top one is up and down, which is this one. So you can do it either way. That's kind of cool. So then you have the, um, and then for the most part, this is just, I'm gonna pull that out. This guy, you just take the wires and run them through like that. And this just drops down in there. And then you have some screws that go into the bottom here. Um, I think that's it, yeah. And then they have the anti, looks like anti-vibration screws. Yeah, they got rubber in here. Okay, so um, now I'm confused about the thing that's inside the, the reservoir because it moves. So maybe it's supposed to come out? I don't know. I'll look. Because to me it looks like a piece of plastic or something, but let's see. All right, so not included. See right here, it even tells you Commander Pro. Um, it should say a light node pro as well, but this has an in and an out, so um, so that means you could technically run your GPU or CPU block into this and then out to your light node pro or your commander pro. Which is a nice feature. They did that, I think, with the 1000D as well. Um, I was just looking for this piece that's inside. Yeah, it shows you the Commander Pro here. Uh, daisy chain to the next piece, uh, direct attach into whatever. Doesn't say anything about the piece inside. So I'm assuming you don't take this apart. Yeah, cause this doesn't look like it comes easily apart. 
you would have to tear down all this. Oh, you know what I was seeing is this, there's a plastic wrapper around here. That's what was confusing me. It made me think that this piece in here was not supposed to stay permanently in there, but why would they do that? So that's probably an anti-turbulence. Uh, uh, it's like a break point to keep it from creating a, a, um, a, a cyclone, you know, the cyclone effect. But being that it's not perfectly round, that kind of kills that too. Um, so it's pretty well made. It's pretty nice. I don't know if it's is it glass. I don't think it's. It doesn't feel heavy enough to be glass. Some kind of plastic. I think Hans was telling me what it was, but I don't remember, so I'm not gonna. put my foot in my ass <laughs> all right so that covers that now you guys have seen the reservoir and now we know that you can daisy chain one of your products whether it be your CPU or GPU off of here um, some pluses pre-sleeve cables uh, RGB from the top instead of the bottom which is a nice feature yeah I don't see any lights at the bottom and there's no way you're gonna run the wires through without seeing it anyway there it's actually in the in the cap uh, I don't know if you guys can see the the white ring in there um, that's the uh, the RGB's all right so I'm just gonna kind of throw this back in here because I don't remember how it came out And there's so many things to go back in here. All right, that's most of that stuff. I think this is like this. Yeah, so quite a bit of stuff with this reservoir. Um, that's I've never seen anybody include a uh, a temp sensor for your your liquid. So that's a nice bonus. Besides the crazy awesome LEDs you get with it. Um, yeah, where are you gonna go, buddy? Just stuff that in there. This one is here, I guess. Here, and that was that bracket, so whatever. There we go. Nope. Yep, yep. Got it. Oh. Almost got it. Okay, so that's the reservoir. And if I'm not mistaken, matter of fact, let me look real quick. Uh, go to Corsair.com, Hydro X. Uh, let's see, Corsair.com. Now, mind you, I haven't really looked any of this stuff up, so I have no idea uh, what all is involved, or maybe what I don't have here on the table. Okay, well, it's not under IQ. Just trying to. Find, oh, custom color. Well, I don't know why I didn't see that. Let me grab some water. Okay, so they have a really cool configurator on their website. Um, my cl my friend uh, William, client as well, um, actually configured the, the build that we're gonna lead into from this video. So we're gonna do a build tomorrow. Uh, most of it'll be, uh, tomorrow will be the, um, uh, how do you say, uh, prep work, I guess you could call it. Uh, let's see, okay, CP block. Let me see CP block. So, we just clicked on full Hydro X lineup. All right, so there's two. AMD, there's, okay.
Okay, so the XC9 is silver only. Yep, a silver only. And then the uh, XC7 is black only. Which there's nothing, there's no drawback to that. But I would think they might come out, maybe they'll come out with some more colors in the future, which would be kind of cool. But if I'm not mistaken, that thing comes off really easy. So you can paint it yourself. Uh, what was I looking for? Oh, the reservoirs. That's right. I wanted to see if there was a uh, different size res. Graphics card, radiator, fitting color, color, product category. Um, well, I don't know. Accessories, I guess. There's one, one reservoir as of right now. So this is their, their only, cur the current reservoir that they have. Um, and it's 250 milliliter acrylic reservoir with integrated fill port. So it's a nice looking reservoir, two ports up top, two three actually uh, on the side so I'm sure in and out and then uh, optional out so plenty of different configurations you can do with it all right so let's move on from that uh, this came out of here uh, I don't know if you guys if anybody was on earlier when I first fired this up uh, let's see here chat I'm sorry oh my bad. Didn't even have the chat up. Sorry, guys. So, what's up, uh, Viking Elite Racer? Good to see you. Um, no, this is this is not a Corsair build, but I'm going to show you what's on the wall back here, and that'll lead into the uh, PC build for tomorrow, because um, that will be an all Corsair. So, what do you got here? Oh man, you're like the number one chatter today. Let's see what you got. You need a better camera also you could stream in 1440p for the extra bandwidth yeah I was actually thinking about switching all my cameras to um, a higher resolution to get a clearer picture because um, I mean I know I can only stream out in uh, well on YouTube is different but on um, on Twitch and Facebook I can only do 1080 yes I remember George over of course I was just talking to him Uh, yeah, the mount is pretty sexy. Uh, yeah, so, all right. So I wanted to show you guys, I think it's camera three. Yeah, so for tomorrow, um, I'll be building this uh, AMD slash Corsair and a Seuss build. Um, as you can see, all those parts there, everything there is Corsair. Uh, the case is out there. It's a 500D, so it's already got pre-installed LLs because it's the RGB SE version. Uh, we got a Commander Pro up there. We got the thermal paste from Corsair, which is the XTM50, and uh, two radiators, 360, 240, the uh, reservoir pump combo, the HX750, the MP600, and uh, 32 gigs. Yeah, 32 gigs of Engines Pro. Uh, the XC7 RGB block, uh, the Ryzen 9 3900X, the 5700XT from ASUS, and the Corsair block for that, and then of course the ROG Crosshair 8 formula. So that'll be the build for tomorrow. Tomorrow will probably be a lot of prep work. It won't be so much. Um, uh, won't be so much building because I gotta. I gotta put a. Uh, I gotta put the CPU or the GPU block on. I gotta put the CPU block on. I gotta figure out the case. I gotta figure out where parts are gonna go. Uh, figure out what the loop's gonna look like. Install radiators, install fans, stuff like that. So I'm gonna do all that tomorrow. That way I could break up the stream because I really don't want to do any more eight-hour streams unless I have to. Um, 
So I'll break it up into two days. So I'll probably stream again tomorrow and then maybe on Friday I'll do the, the finished build for that one because that'll give me a little bit of time in between to in case I got to cut some holes or or whatever. You, know, you never know, drill something, whatever. Um, that'll give me time to do that. So let's get back to this stuff and then uh, we'll move on from there. All right, so I want to take a look at the radiators because I haven't actually looked at any of the radiators. Um, so far, build quality is on par. Corsair usually doesn't make any chintzy stuff, at least not that I've seen, except for, you know what? I have to complain about this. You know, this is the, the, the water bottle from Corsair. And um, I'm sorry, guys. I mean, this is helpful because it does have the nice tube, comes all the way down to the bottom. And it probably, it's probably anti-leak. So you're, when you squeeze it, yeah. I mean, this works better like this. Yeah, but it's, oh, there's, hold on, let me see. No, there's a little, there's a little leakage, but uh, I don't think anybody's gonna be squeezing that hard, except for me, probably. Anyways, uh, this, you need an XL bottle. This is uh, not even enough to prime the pump. You know what I mean? So we need to, I mean, it's enough to prime the pump, but um, the pump's gonna blow that liquid out of, this, uh, out of the pump area, reservoir area, so fast that you're just gonna constantly be flipping on and off the power supply. Um, Cause usually when I gotta fill up a bottle, I, I want something like this, this size. Something this big. So I can put all that liquid into the bottle at once and not have to keep filling it back up because uh, I, I don't know. I know when I was first pouring liquid in from one bottle to the other, I was making a mess all the time. I'm pretty good at it now. I don't spill too much. Uh, even if I'm going from like my salsa jar into this bottle, I usually don't spill a lot. Uh, I'm going to knock on wood now because next time I go to pour some, it's going to go all over the place. Um, but I mean, come on. This needs to go into here, so we need to make this bigger. All right, food for thought. Corsair, bigger bottle, XL bottle. Step it up, XL, XL. All right, and that's the Corsair liquid over there. So that that's literally my only complaint that I have that I can think off the top of my head. Oh, and why did I put the Commander Pro in? I need the Commander Pro again for it. So I can show you what I was going to talk about. So I'm going to pull this back out. And put it over here on top of this box. All right, cool. So now we're back on this radiator. And I'm assuming all the radiators are pretty much the same. So you got your different... Well, at least they taped it all in there so that way it doesn't get on top. That So that's one thing you don't want if you get a radiator from a manufacturer. The last thing you want is your, your, your screws to be right here on top like this. Because... If Joe Schmo, who's delivering it to you, decided to bang on the box that it, you know, let's say it's in whatever box, and maybe all this other stuff's on top of it, and these are in here, whatever, you know, if it gets smashed down, it's going to smash right into your fins and your, your water channels, and that's going to be a bad day. Now, I've seen where uh, some companies will put cardboard and then put tape the screws to the cardboard. That's perfectly fine because the cardboard's soft enough that it, it, if somebody pushed down on it, it's gonna bend. It's not gonna leave divots inside your radiator. So this is packaged pretty good. We've got a little foam on the end. And of course you got your warranty against defects here. I'm just gonna get her open. We got some cap covers here, keep the dust out. Let's have a look, see. That looks pretty good. Fin density is pretty good. Um, I, get, I didn't even read the box. My guess is it's probably 20-ish fins per inch, something like that. Okay. Technical details. 
30 mil thickness for high surface area, 25. So it's a 25 micron thick cooling fins. So I usually do fins per inch FPI, but I don't see it on this box. Unless that's what the 25 is for. Because that looks like 25. 30 is a lot tighter than that. Um, anyway, so the quality looks really good. Uh, nice, nice surface. Of course, their sticker. Their emblem. So at least it would be right side up. No matter which way you do it. Even if you put it on the front. Still looks good. As far as the screws that come with it, you get um, three different sets of screws. I'm assuming you got your, your mount directly to case screws, which are the shorter ones. Um, and out of these two, there's probably a longer set. The longer set's going to be to go through another piece of uh, material. And then the, the shorter of these two, unless this is for push-pull. I don't know. It could be for push-pull. Yeah, nope. There's, well, it is for push pull probably, but yeah, so one set's 35 mil and one's 30, which is about right. So 30 usually is not long enough to go through, let's say, the case panel front, uh, a fan, and the radiator. So you end up having to go 35. And the good thing is, is about the radiators, they have a, a plate uh, underneath the, the hole here. So if you end up screwing all the way in, you hit that plate before you hit the. Um, the water channel or whatever you want to call it the fin because if you hit these if those break it's going to leak and that's going to be a bad deal yeah so radiators and i got most of the radiators here i just don't i don't have the 480 um i don't use 480s too much i do on occasion but um i'm trying to not i mean i don't have a problem doing a big ass pc for somebody but for myself, personally, I'm trying to get away from having to carry around any big computers anymore. <coughs> All right. So let me actually let me put these back on the side here. So now we've got a chance to look at the radiator, the reservoir, the, the water box for the CPU, the different CPUs, and we're going to take a look at the GPU block now as well. And then we'll get to the fittings. All right, so we gotta figure something else out for these stupid screws. There we go. And then we'll talk about the tubing as well. Um, their liquid. And then we'll get back to the Commander Pro. All right, so for the for the water block, I'm going to open up the AMD block since we'll be doing the AMD build tomorrow. And this is the block we'll be using. The other two are just going to chill for now until I get some time to put something together. I feel like that should have been in the bag, but maybe not. Now this was bought directly from, I think it was bought directly from Corsair. So it's a full coverage block, but not full coverage block. Does that make sense? So, I mean, but you don't really need, there's nothing over here to cool anyway. Um, but it covers the whole entire GPU. Oh shoot, it even has a flow meter in here. I didn't know they put flow meters in there. That's clever. Snuck that thing in there. It's a nice quality. Um, and there's a screw floating around inside there. Awesome. So somebody didn't do their job and put the screws on all the way. I don't know if you guys see one of the screws is out right here. <laughs> it's floating around inside the plastic, which is fine. I mean, I'll just put it back in. Um, so it's already got pre-installed pads on it. 
with some dust, which is kind of weird, but just clean it off, I guess, before you, I want to say this should be in plastic. Why is this, is this just me that thinks that or? What's up, Anthony? Um, no, I mean, they're kind of new. They came out, what, a few months back or shoot, I don't know. It's probably been almost a year now. I don't even remember. Um, it's just, I, I've had this stuff on my shelf for a while and I haven't had time to look at any of it. And I'm gonna be doing a uh, all exclusive, pretty much all Corsair build tomorrow. So I wanted to kind of look at some of their products since I have all this stuff here and uh, just kind of give kudos uh, where it's deserved, you know. Uh, since, uh, yeah, since they sent me a bunch of stuff a while back. Oh yeah, I guess they, they're open like that. Um, so my only bitch about this Corsair would be that now you're getting stuff on your, these thermal pads unless Let me see if there's the. Let me look at the instruction manual because maybe it has a. Um, what do you call it? A film on the outside because I know when you put them on yourself on other GPUs, GPU blocks and stuff, when you put thermal pads on, they have double sided uh, film and you have to pull that off before you install them. So let me double check this. And here's the. It comes with the. So here's your manual. Cool Corsair backplate with uh, with their logo there. Thin thin aluminum, and then some kind of what is this plug tool? What's the plug tool for? Guess that probably says in the manual, huh? <laughs> All right, so it doesn't say anything about I start at the beginning. Unscrew all fasteners, original heat sink, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. No, so. I don't see anything about uh, mentioning any kind of film or anything on the uh, on the thermal pads. So my my only bitch with this would be that yeah, there's no film there. Is now so the, out of the two that I've opened, there's been debris on the thermal pad. Um, it's probably not going to affect your cooling too much, but. You know, you could probably wipe it off. Yeah, see, like, it comes off here pretty easy. There's got to be a way to cover that so it's not getting this. The, the, the stuff that I'm finding on here is from the foam. Um, so I want to see what... And this is, is this just me or is this strange looking here? <laughs> Different for sure. So you want to look through the manual a little bit more? Oh, I guess your fitting's going to cover most of that. You're not going to see anything there anyway. What is the tool for? Yeah, it doesn't show any 
things up at all. In fact, it doesn't even show this tool as a package contents. So it says it's a, a plug tool. It's, it's plastic. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like it would slide down in between the two, um, the port. So if I pulled this dominator looking bracket off of here, I bet this slides right in between to check clearances to see if you're, you're your plug or port or fitting or whatever is going too far into the to the channel because if you have a fitting that has really long thread it might go too far and block all your flow um, so maybe that's what this is for but it's just weird that I don't really see anything about it in here It says in here do not do not install the input and output on one side of the block now who would do that you know just in here and back out here <laughs> hopefully nobody would do that yeah I don't see anything about this tool And it says don't use any tools to tighten down your fitting. So be leery if you if you buy EK fittings or something that require a wrench to tighten down. Um, yeah, because you end up breaking something. All right, well, I'm going to put this, put it away. Overall, nice looking block. My only pet peeve is the thermal pads exposed like that. They're picking up dust from this thing. Um, if there was a way to... See, they, they're not even making contact because this guy is here. But the movement inside the box is cut enough that it's picking up something. So maybe they can, in my opinion, this is, this is how I would ship them. Because for one, you already have thermal pads installed. So the last thing you want to do is uh, have them touch anything. You could probably install this onto there um, this way with two screws or not yeah maybe and they wouldn't touch I don't know I'm just trying to think outside the box here for how to fix the issue because when you have pre-installed thermal pads the last thing you want to do is put it in a piece of plastic you put it in a piece of plastic Nine out of ten times those thermal pads are going to stick to that plastic. Um, so maybe this is the only option that they could come up with here for pre-installed uh, thermal pads. But that's a nice feature. I'll, I'll give them that. Pre-installed thermal pads is awesome. I freaking hate doing pre uh, installing thermal pads. They take forever. My average time on a video card is about an hour. With, you know, installing all my thermal pads and stuff like that. I'm just trying to make this fit back in here and this goes here cool cool all right so now let's check out some fittings get back to the commander pro um, once again uh, for anybody 
Uh, there's only a couple of you guys in here. For anybody that was in here in the beginning, um, for your GPU block and CPU block, you'll need a Light Node Pro or a Commander Pro in order to control them. Um, same goes for the reservoir. The reservoir has the, the pigtail as well. Um, the good thing is, is that the reservoir has an in and an out, so you can run your CPU or GPU to the reservoir and then to the Commander Pro or Light Node Pro, whatever you chose. Let's take a look at some fittings here. Uh, this is the, the Y splitter from Corsair. Ooh, so. Okay. So that's the Y splitter. How's that a Y? Come on, guys. It comes out here and it goes out there. That's more of a. Eh, I guess it's still considered a Y. A Y to me is out there and out there, but. Good quality fitting. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. It's very nice. Nice and shiny. Corsair logo is nice and prominent. So there's that. Here, I'll leave this out. Let's look at your 45 rotaries, chrome finish. The, I think they were all chrome. Oh, this is. They didn't put their logo on this one. Maybe they just didn't figure, maybe there was just no logical spot or. I see the 90. Okay, so now there's two stickers. Am I getting, what's going on? Exacto knife, probably easier to use that than my my buck knife. Yeah. Same with the ninety. No logo. They're very nice though, nice and shiny. As you can see this one here, because I know it's kind of far down there, nice logo, both sides. All right, let's see the, and then I have the fill port, and then obviously I have more 90s, and the 45s, um, ball valve, yeah, this, see, this one doesn't have any tape on it. Just here. I don't know why that one had all that tape. <coughs> it's getting hot. <coughs> so these are the 14 millimeter OD. Uh, yep, pretty nice. Simple compression top here. O-ring. So you stick your tube in there. This slides up onto the tube. So does the O-ring. And then uh, you slide your tube in there. Um, what I found the easiest way to use these is to um, deburr the end of your uh, tubing before you stick it into this. So basically you want to round out the bottom, the edge that's going to go in there. Because if it's a sharp edge, it'll want to bite into the, uh, the O-ring there. And it doesn't hurt to lick your finger and, and, and get the o-ring give it a little moisture because then it'll slide right in a lot easier just food for thought good catch ball valve ball valve ball valve so i'm thinking that for the most uh, for the bigger items they opted to do the logo and then the smaller items they they chose not to probably because it doesn't make any sense there's not a lot of space 
like this one they put the full Corsair uh, branding on it um, let me go that way there you go pretty clean even on top here opens and closes pretty smooth nice click at the end there you can feel that awesome okay um, and fill port. So I'm pretty impressed so far with what I've seen. I mean, like I, I had a couple pet peeves, but I mean, that's just, everybody's going to have them. Um, just because I don't like something doesn't mean it's, it's all bad, you know? Um, oh, wow. Okay. So this comes pre-installed with the plug on it already. Um, whether you choose to use that plug, it's totally up to you. It's just a plastic plug. And just so you guys know, the best thing to use on these plugs is uh, a dime, a quarter, a nickel, whatever fits best in here without any sloppy play. Uh, I always have the dime handy because I know some fittings are, the, the track here is very thin. But don't use a freaking flathead screwdriver in there because if you do, It'll gouge into the sides, even on the metal ones. I've done it so many times in the past. That's how I learned not to use the screwdriver. Um, so this is pretty straightforward. Um, fill port, uh, panel mount, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's, it's a nice transition piece. If you were doing uh, a lot of fittings running through a panel or going into a separate part of your case, or even going out the back of the case. Um, so it has an O-ring here, and then it has your uh, tightened down ring. So the O-ring gives restriction for this. Um, so when you tighten it down and that O-ring hits your metal case or wherever it's at, uh, even acrylic, it, it creates a nice friction to where it, it doesn't move anywhere. So you don't have to lock tight it or nothing in place. So yeah, so pretty nice. Oh. Dropping stuff here. So I wanted to look at all this stuff so I kind of know what I'm getting into for tomorrow because I got, like I said, um, this AMD Corsair Asus build that I'll be doing. Um, I'm just putting the block back up there because I was keeping my client's parts separated from the other stuff. So let's go put this away. So I'll just go ahead and Slide these out of the way here. Let's load these back in here. And they all have the warrant. Well, this one doesn't. But they all have the warranty um, um, paper in there. Warranty against defects. Um, this Mine was a sample pack, so. And then these are more hard line fittings, 14 millimeter OD. Um, and a couple more 45s and 90s. Uh, let me look at the tubing real quick and then I'll check out the commander again. So this is PMMA tubing, 14 millimeter OD. Um, I have not worked with this at all yet. Um, so I have no idea what the difference between the PMMA and the uh, acrylic or PETG is. So... I'll have to look in, you know, do a test run. I guess there's three tubes in here. Yeah, could have put four. I don't know why I only put three. So see, this has that rough edge. So if you try to stick this into the fitting right away, it's gonna wanna catch up on the O-ring. So you just take, uh, like I have a deeper tool um, that I just run on this and it, it would take that, knock that down a little bit. Or you can use sandpaper or a file and just kind of, just round it out a little bit. You don't have to necessarily do the inside except for when you cut a piece off, then you want to clean the inside out because otherwise you end up with a bunch of plastic inside your loop and that's not very good. So I don't know the properties of the PMMA. So I'm not going to find out by flexing it too much and shattering it. Because I know if PETG, I could flex it almost all the way down. And, um, and it won't break. 
Acrylic on the other side, you flex it all the way down, it'll probably shatter. Um, so I, 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 this feels more towards acrylic than PETG. It feels a lot more sturdier. Um, yeah, so. Which will be good because I'm not using PETG anymore. Had too many problems with it. All right, so that was a kind of look there at their tubing. Tubing looks cool. I'll have to come back to that, experiment with that some. And then, of course, they got their liquids. Uh, I want to say they have, they have a bunch of different uh, colors. Uh, it's a performance coolant, the XL5. Let me check on their website and see what else they got. Um, I didn't even look into that. They got the clear, obviously. We got that. Uh, let's see here. Come back down. Uh, So they have the Hydro X Series XL5 Performance Coolant 1 liter. So they have, shoot, they don't even have clear on their website. They have purple, they have a blue, they have a green, and they have a red. Interesting. Huh. So I don't see it clear. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, do they have more? Color. Oh, no, no, this is just color. Sort by color. Yeah. Let's see. It's clear under color. Oh, no, they do have a clear on there. Well, I wonder why it didn't come up under the... Under the coolant. That's weird. Okay. So they do have a clear. That makes sense, then. I was going to say, why do I have a clear? All right, so... Um, Oh, um, sealed. Never mind. I was gonna smell it too. It smells like I've smelled so many different liquids that. So it's ten percent glycol. So it's eighty nine percent ultra pure water and ten percent glycol. Where did the other one percent go? Freezing point, boiling point, shelf time. Two years shelf time, that's pretty good. Uh, I think that's about average. Or about the, the standard, not average, but. Constant children, hot, all solid, yeah, glycol could do that. All right, so good stuff. Should work just fine. All right, so back to this. So I was talking about how I, I was digging through my stuff uh, earlier today and uh, actually yesterday and I came across this box. Uh, anybody that works at Corsair or anybody that bought Corsair Link stuff back in the day is probably remember this old box. Um, yeah, so this is the Corsair Link controller. So I remember getting a couple different of these kits and they came with a bunch of stuff. Um, there was depending on what kit you got I think this actually was a kit where it came with uh, LEDs and and all kinds of other stuff so there's a uh, fan extension cables there was um, this which plugged into something I don't remember anymore <laughs> and your temp sensors uh, but I just wanted to show you the difference you know how where where we started and where we're at now so here is the commander pro Here's the Corsair Link controller from back in the day. Um, so now we've went, we still got temp sensors, one through four. So got those. Um, this was for different components. Like I think you could do your power supply. Um, I want to say that you could even do some RAM modules at one point, because these look like the same exact plugs that were on the, the old school dominators and um, uh, stuff like that. Uh, even some of the, the, the platinum dominators um, and then you could do six fans well you can still do six fans this only had one LED channel where we ha now have two but we also have a USB hub inside this one and the software for this is way more advanced because I remember trying to mess around with this back in the day and I just get lost because I wouldn't know what to do it was just too much stuff and it didn't seem like I could ever get anything to change 
Um, and then I had this was in the box too. This is obviously goes to your um, like a AX one thousand I or twelve hundred I or something like that. Uh, which these are handy too. But you can daisy chain this with this. And I don't know why this is in here, but whatever. But yeah, so I mean, this come a long way from that controller to this controller. Um, their software is a lot more advanced and it works pretty damn good um, to be able to control all your, your LED stuff. Because the last thing I want to do is have four different softwares to control my RGBs. You know, if I set up my system, I'm going to switch cameras because I'm talking, so I figured I'd uh, at least be talking to the camera. If I build, uh, I guess I don't need my headset, huh? If I build a system, the last thing I want to do is have a bunch of different software to run it. You know, I just want one software, you know, I just want one thing, you know, to control everything. My RGBs, my RAM, um, you know, and when I say RGBs, I mean RGBs on everything, whether it's my RGB strips, it's RGBs on my reservoir, it's RGBs on my CPU block, wherever my lights are, I want it all to be controlled together. Um, it, it, it just simplifies stuff. And I feel like IQ is probably the closest that has accomplished that so far. Uh, because for one, there's been a few different RAM makers that I've, uh, RAM modules that I use, not always Corsair, I, I use others. And, um, and IQ sometimes finds them. And, and that I like. And it, the thing is, is if it doesn't find it, Maybe I'll get lucky, and because I mostly use Asus motherboards, maybe I'll get lucky and the Asus board will find it. Um, if not, it's just, you know, time to switch the RAM. <laughs> um, you know, but w when I go into IQ and I have all links, Corsair link and IQ set up, where it's, uh, you know, some ML fans, a Commander Pro, a couple different Light Node Pros, the RGB uh, LED strips from uh, Corsair, and um, either some dominators and there's a couple other brands that, that work in IQ as well. Um, unless that's changed, I don't know, don't quote me on that. Um, and then be able to control all of it and get the same effects across everything without having to go into the ASUS ROG Sync or uh, whatever it is that they're using now, Aurora Sync, ROG Sync. Um, the Aurora Sync, or if I'm using an MSI board, you know, the Mystic Light, or if I'm using a uh, Gigabytes board, their uh, Aurora's, uh, shoot, I don't even remember what it's called now. <laughs> so, uh, but everybody's got a different um, RGB control software, you know, and some are way more advanced than others, you know, like uh, I, I will say the ASUS's software has come a long way, but the other, the other vendors are right behind them, you know, Gigabyte, uh, MSI, ASRock, EVGA, they're all, they're all, you know, coming out with the, the software, making more advances, and um, pretty soon they're all going to be right at the same speed. Um, Asus recently, well, not recently, they, they started pushing the Armory Crate, and I've had some, when I first installed it, I had an issue where it, it wasn't seeing any of my RGB products, so... I was just like, well, I'm not using this crap no more. So I uninstalled that, and then uh, and then I couldn't get the RGBs to work at all again. So I was like, okay. So I had to do a restore, and then when I got it back to the Aurora uh, Sync software, I was like, okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. And, and then at some point, that stopped working. So I had to go back and download the Armory Crate, and then it worked, and I was just like, what the hell? But I mean, it's, it's, it's just so much simpler to have one suite, you know? And so if you're gonna do RGB, just pick a vendor and, and get their stuff and go all the same, you know? As far, whatever they offer. If they offer fans, a fan controller, uh, RGB controller, uh, RGBs, try, try to get all the same vendor because the minute you start having um, different brands, then you start having all these different controllers and different softwares and that, that's more resources being used up on your PC. And I'm a gamer, so the last thing I want is more stuff going on in the background because that's more chance of problems, losing FPS or crashes during video games, you know? So uh, while I'm trying to take a break and unwind and play some games, get my game on or whatever, the last thing I want to have is uh, my PC 
crash or my game alt tab because stupid windows has this dumb notification crap that keeps popping up and, and screwing everything up. Uh, but anyways, um, so I mean, for the most part, this, this stuff has come quite a ways as, as far as the, the IQ software. And, uh, I remember when it first came out, it, it was a little buggy, but it was beta back then. I think when I, when I first tried it and, and I gave a little bit of feedback on it where I was having some issues with some fans or something like that. And, and not too long later, they came out with a patch and it fixed the problem. So, uh, it's by far way past beta now. Um, you know, and, and every time I, I think I'm using it on my main system at home, I don't have any problems. You know, I set my lights up and they're done. You know, I don't, I don't ever have to mess with it. Yeah. IQ is running in the background, but, uh, it's not a big deal. It's not like I have IQ Aurora sync and 10 other manufacturers, RGB software running at the same time. So I'm not, not too worried about that. Um, you know, and, and plus now the horsepower that you get, you get a 10 core CPU and 32 gigs of RAM. I think, you know, a couple processes isn't gonna hurt anything. Um, but yeah, so for the most part, I just wanted to talk about all these different Corsair uh, Hydro X products. And uh, I think for the most part, I have quite a few different ones of what they offer. Uh, I got both, all the CPU blocks, uh, pretty much the GPU blocks. I think a lot of the fitting lineup some tubing in, in liquid so we kind of went over that stuff and uh and just to lead into the pc build i'm going to do tomorrow so tomorrow i'm going to actually be doing a, a pretty much all all corsair asus and amd setup um that's what's up on the shelves over here this is all for the the, the build and the, the 500d rgb se case so tomorrow i'll be doing all the prep work and then I want to say on Friday, I'll probably wrap it up, you know, actually build it out. So tomorrow it'll be like installing GPU block, putting in CPU blocks, putting in fans, doing the radiators, trying to figure out how the loop's going to go. I mean, if it goes well tomorrow, maybe I'll bang the whole system out tomorrow, you know. But if I come across uh, things where I got to modify, I can do, I'll do that on uh, the next day, which will be Thursday. So that way uh, it gives me a little break in between. But if it doesn't look like there's that much involved, then I'll knock the whole thing out tomorrow. So hopefully you guys can join me for tomorrow. Um, and uh, let me see, there's a couple comments here. Let me go check out some comments. Can't read them from over there. Oh, so sure, Vonzo, what's that for? He says, uh, I don't, that was, um, what time is it? A few minutes ago. It's just a couple minutes ago. Uh, I'm not sure what what it is that you're uh, referring to. Maybe you're talking about the the Commander Pro. Um, this is a controller. Um, I hope that's what you're talking about. It's a controller for your fans, your RGBs, temp sensors, uh, USB hub, stuff like that. It works really well. Um, and then let's see, Andres. I'm only gonna buy the CPU block because of all my Lights, including RAM, are from Corsair. This way I can control everything with IQ. I hate Asus Aurora. Yeah, so I mean, that's the way to roll if you're gonna, if you're gonna do the, the water cooling, the CPU block, it'll plug right into your, your IQ stuff, um, whether it's the Commander Pro or the um, Light Note Pro. <coughs> Commander Pro is amazing. A lot of wires, but it works, yeah. I agree. It is a lot of wires and you have to sacrifice some serious time to do some wire management, but it's doable. Uh, my buddy, Peter Brands, he, he, he made it look like, made it look easy. He hit all the wires on a system we did together. And I, I couldn't believe my eyes when I looked at it because it, you could even tell that there was Commander Pro wiring and RGB lights wiring going everywhere. And, and he hit it all nice and tidy away. Um, so yeah, it'll, El Nino. Yep, Commander Pro wiring diagram on Google Pro, uh, Google Chrome. Yeah, there's a, a few out there, um, and it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you can't really mess it up uh, as far as wiring stuff up, but uh, but yeah, like I said, so I just wanted to kind of check all this stuff out because Corsair sent me some of this stuff a long time ago, uh, a few months back. And I haven't really had a chance to look at it. And uh, I, well, I mean, 
I was actually waiting for the studio to be done so I could actually do a live stream like we're doing right now to take a look at all this stuff and, and talk about it and give you guys my thoughts. Um, you know, the only pet peeve I really have is this stupid water bottle. It needs to be bigger. <laughs> so with that being said, uh, hopefully you guys can check out the video tomorrow. I will be doing a, a live build tomorrow with a bunch of Corsair products, some ASUS hardware and AMD GPU and CPU. And, um, and yeah, stay tuned. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Till next time.